Optimus is the code name for the Tesla bot. Oops. <laughs> Optimus Subprime. <laughs>about what we're doing right now with the cars, uh, Tesla is arguably the world's biggest robotics company because our cars are like se semi-sentient robots on wheels. Um, and with uh, uh, the full self-driving computer, essentially the, the inference engine on the car, which will keep evolving obviously, and uh, Dojo uh, and all the uh, neural nets recognizing the world, understanding how to navigate through the world. Uh, it it kind of makes sense to put that onto a humanoid form. Um, and we're also quite good at uh, sensors and batteries and uh, actuators. So uh, we think we'll probably have uh, a prototype sometime next year uh, that uh, is, basically looks like this. Um, and it's intended to um, uh, be friendly, of course. Um, <laughs> and uh, navigate through a world uh, built for humans and uh, eliminate dangerous, repetitive, and boring tasks. Um, we're setting it such that it is, um, at a mechanical level, at a physical level, uh, you can run away from it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and most likely overpower it. <laughs> so uh, hopefully that doesn't ever happen, but um, you never know. So it's a, uh, it'll be a, you know, a light, a, a light, yeah, anyway, five miles an hour, you can, if you can get run faster than that, it'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, it's a, around, around uh, five foot eight, um, uh, has sort of a, a screen where the head is for useful information, um, but it's otherwise basically got the autopilot system in it, so it's uh, got cameras, got eight cameras, and um, yeah, uh, the full self-driving computer, and making use of all of the same tools that we use in the car. So, um, I mean, things that I think that are really hard about uh, having a useful humanoid robot is can it navigate through the world without being expl explicitly trained? Uh, I mean, can, without explicit like line-by-line uh, -line instructions. Um, can you, can you talk to it and say, you know, please uh, pick up that bolt uh, and uh, attach it to the car with that wrench, and it should be able to do that. Um, it should be able to, you know, please, you know, please go to the store and get me the following groceries, um, that kind of thing. So, yeah, I think we can do that. Um, <laughs> and, yeah. This, I think, will be quite, quite profound because if you say, like, what is the economy? It is, uh, at the foundation, it is labor. So what happens when there is, uh, you know, no shortage of, of labor? Um, this is why I think long term that there will need to be universal basic income. Um, yeah. But, but not right now, because this robot doesn't work. Uh, so <laughs> we just need a minute. <laughs> So, um, yeah, but I think it's, it's essentially in the future, uh, physical work will be a choice. If you, if you want to do it, you can, but you won't need to do it. And, um, yeah, I think it obviously has profound implications for the economy because uh, given that the economy at, at its foundational level uh, is labor, I mean, capital, is, uh, capital equipment is just distilled labor, uh, then um, is there any actual limit to the economy? Uh, maybe not. Um, so... Yeah. Join our team and help build this. All right, so I think we'll, we'll have everyone come back on the stage and you guys can ask questions if you'd like. My question has to do with sort of AI and manufacturing. It's been a while since we've heard about the alien dreadnought concept. Is the humanoid that's behind you guys, is that kind of brought out of the production hell timeline and saying that humans are underrated in that process? Um. Well, sometimes, like some, you know, something that I say is uh, taken to too much of an extreme. Um, there, <laughs> um, there are parts of the Tesla system that are, are almost completely automated, and then there are some parts that are almost completely manual. Um, and 
if you were to walk through the whole production system, you would see a very wide range from, yeah, like I said, f fully automatic to almost completely manual. Uh, but the vast majority, it, it, most of it is, is, is already uh, automated. Um, so, and then with the, some of the design architecture changes, like going to large uh, aluminum uh, high pressure die cast uh, components, we, we can take the entire rear third of the car and cast it as a single piece. And now we're going to do the, the front third of the car as a single piece. So the, the body line um, drops by like 60 to 70 percent in size. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the robot is not, is not prompted by, uh, specifically by manufacturing needs. It's, it's just that um, we're just obviously making the pieces that are needed for a useful humanoid robot. Um, so I guess we probably should make it. And if we don't, someone else would, well, and so I guess we should make it and make sure it's safe. I should say, like, also manufacturing, volume manufacturing is extremely difficult um, and underrated, and we've gotten pretty good at that. So it's also important for that humanoid robot. Like, how do you make the humanoid robot not be super expensive and, you know, so your humanoid context, I'm wondering if you've decided on what use cases you're going to start with and what the grand challenges um, are in that context to make this viable. Well, I think for the human, for the Tesla bot, um, Optimus, uh, it's, it's basically going to start with uh, just dealing with uh, work that is uh, boring, repetitive, and dangerous. Um, basically, what is the work that people would least like to do? I was curious about the Tesla bot. Um, specifically, I'm wondering if there are any specific applications that you think the humanoid form factor lends itself to. And then secondary, um, because of its human form factor, is emotion or companionship at all thought about on the product roadmap at all? <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, we, we certainly hope this does not feature in a dystopian sci-fi movie. Uh, but, uh, you know, like, really, at this point, we're, we're saying, like, maybe this robot can, it just, we're, try, I'm, we're trying to be as literal as possible. Can it do um, boring, dangerous, repetitive uh, jobs that people don't want to do? And, uh, you know, once we can have it do that, then maybe we can do other things too, but that's the, that's the thing that would be really great to have. So, it could be your buddy too, I mean, if I want to have it be your, your friend and whatever. <laughs> I'm sure that people will think of some very creative uses. <laughs> I have a question about the design of the Tesla bot. Specifically, um, in order, uh, how is it important is it to maintain that humanoid form? Um, to build hands with five fingers uh, that also respects the weight limits could be quite challenging. You might have to use cable driven, and then that also causes all kinds of issues. Um, I, I mean, this is just going to be bot version one. I mean, we'll see. So, the it, it's. It needs to be able to do things that, that people do um, and uh, you know, be a generalized you know, humanoid robot. Um, I mean, you could, make, you could potentially have it give, give it like you know, two fingers and a thumb or something like that. Um, for, you know, for now, we'll, we'll, we'll give it five fingers and, and see, see if that works out OK. I probably will. It, it doesn't need to be like, uh, you know, have like inc incredible grip strength. Um, but it needs to be able to work with tools, so and you know carry a bag, that kind of thing. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the short to medium term economics of the bot. I guess I understand the long term vision of replacing physical labor, but I also think repetitive, dangerous, and boring tasks tend to not be so highly compensated, and so I just don't see how to reproduce the, you know, start with a supercar and then break into like the lower end of the market, how do you do that for a robot humanoid? Well, I guess you'll just have to see. <laughs>
As our models have become more and more capable, and I guess you're deploying these models into the real world, um, one thing I guess that's possible is for AI to become more, I guess, misaligned with what humans desire. So I guess, is this something that you guys are worried about as you guys deploy more and more robots, um, or do you guys, like, we'll solve that problem when we get there? Yeah, I think that we should be worried about AI. Um, now, like, w what we're trying to do here is, I say, narrow AI, or uh, pretty narrow, like just make the car drive better than a human. Um, and then have the humanoid robot be able to do ba basic stuff. Um, no, uh, you know, so um, at the point at which it, you sort of start to get to superhuman intelligence, uh, yeah, I don't know, all bets are off. Um, but, you know, and that, that's, that's, that's quite, you know, that'll, that'll probably happen, but, but what, we're, what we're trying to do here at, at Tesla is make useful AI that people love and, and is uh, unequivocally good. That's our, you know, we'll try to aim for that.